OK, so in this uh, short introduction to match moving, we're going to be using 3D Equalizer. Um, we're going to be starting off just by taking a look at match moving as a process, uh, looking at what it is and how we achieve it. Um, so first of all, um, this is a match move scene that I've, uh, I've put together earlier. And if we hit play and I display 3D points, there we go you'll see that we have a number of green crosshairs sitting on points within our backplate. Now, these are actually 3D points in space. You'll also see, I'll just stop that a moment, that we also have small red dots just underneath each of these green crosshairs. Now, the small red dots are 2D markers. So these are two-dimensional points on our backplate that have been tracked um, throughout the scene. Now, once we have a decent spread of points in our scene, we can then use that to extrapolate the data out to feed into the camera to create 3D points in space um, with a moving camera around them. Um, so, if I take a look, this is the uh, this is a 2D editor. Um, I'm taking a look at this in 2D at the moment. If I jump into my 3D orientation, you can actually see what it's actually given me. So I have a camera that is moving along a path. And in space, I have my 2D points now res resolved as 3D points. So you can see I can move around that and you can start to make out some of the shapes. This here, these are the points on the tabletop that you can see here, one, two, three, four. Um, if I come over the top a little bit more, you'll see we have points over here. These are points on the wall and we have a number of points on the floor as well. So by extrapolating this data out, we get points in space as well as a camera which is moving based on the original two-dimensional piece of footage. So we're now going to take a look at some of the areas of 3D Equalizer's interface. So um, this is the default layout that you'll be presented with uh, when you open up 3D Equalizer. And um, down the left-hand side, we have the Object Browser, Point Browser, and Deviation Browser. Firstly, we have the Object Browser. The Object Browser is basically a list view of all of the assets in our scene. So you'll see at the very top, uh, by the way, these are also hierarchically listed. So at the very top, we have a scene node. Inside the scene node, we have cameras. Those cameras have footage connected to them. And also inside the scene node, we also have point groups. So the point groups are groups of points that we track in two dimensions. Now underneath that, we also have a lens, which obviously is attributed to the camera. And at the moment, that's just set up with a default lens, which we can adjust. So basically, anything we create inside 3D Equalizer will be listed here in the object browser. We can select it and edit it from there. We also have the point browser. So when we're creating our two-dimensional um, tracking points, they will be listed in the point browser. And we'll be able to, again, select and edit from here. We also have the deviation browser. Now, later on, once we solve our, um, our track, um, we'll be able to look at the amount of deviation between the 2D markers and 3D markers. Basically, how much a two-dimensional marker um, and a three-dimensional marker diverge from their original positions on a frame-by-frame -frame basis. Again, we'll take a look at this as we go along. Finally, um, we have obviously the tracking window itself, and this is uh, context sensitive. You can jump into different menus uh, based on what you're doing. So if we're auto tracking, we go in here. If we're aligning our scene, we can use our 3D orientation controls and so on. Again, we'll take a look at that as we go. And there's also obviously our timeline. So we have a pretty standard 
timeline that you can drag you can play forwards and backwards go back to the start or the end and we can also go forwards and backwards one keyframe at a time there's also a menu bar down here um, and these are just a uh, pretty standard um, file menu we have windows this opens up uh, other browsers uh, that we can browsers and editors I should say uh, that we can use um, we also have different environments so depending on the type of operation you're doing currently we're in the basic um, view if I go to say auto tracking this gives me a menu layout better suited for auto tracking and so on so I'm just going to go back to basic there we go um, okay let me just adjust that because we've lost a little bit of room there bring that up okay we've also got options where we can adjust our preferences uh, playback where we can do things like change the speed of the playback and also export out um, compressed versions of our backplate so we can play that back more efficiently and we also have special frames which is to do with the calculation of the area of the track um, that you're basing your camera move on uh, we have the calc menu uh, this is where we can actually calculate once we've actually tracked in two dimensions our shot we can then calculate the shot from there uh, we can also fine-tune it and so on and there's also the ability to, for Python scripting and we can also using the configuration panels which you'll see in all of the menus config uh, we can also customize our viewport so if for any reason maybe I need a horizontal let's say I need a timeline in here I can say add horizontal timeline editor and there you go adds a new um, menu in there for me uh, but I'm going to close that uh, because I want to pretty much use the default standard settings here so the first step of any match moving process is to obviously load in the footage um, now I can do that via the object browser if I go down into cameras and double click on where we have sequence number one double click in there that will bring up my attribute editor and load in the camera tab I'm just going to go across to the live action footage hit browse and load my footage in if I select this and load Maya garden okay I'm just going to close that down and I'm going to hit play just to begin caching the sequence into RAM okay so we should have fast playback now okay now the first part of any tracking process is to understand as I said as much about the footage as you can um, if I take a look at the footage uh, I can tell that it's 720 by 486 now unfortunately with this piece of footage I don't actually have any other information about it I don't know what camera this was shot on I don't know what lens it was shot on uh, and that's gonna make things a little bit trickier but I do have some clues to help me uh, sort of work out the correct format firstly the resolution um, if I take a look as I said it's 720 by 486 now whenever I'm presented with a resolution that I'm not entirely sure of what I'll probably usually do is Google it so I'm just gonna bring up Google and if I do type in 720 by 486 format I'll probably find lots and lots of things about aspect ratios and what we've got here you can see it's saying if I click on this link here um, a little bit further down a little bit of exploration we'll find that there you go in here it will tell me that 720 by 486 is D1 NTSC format and the pixel aspect ratio of this is 0.9 uh, it's, by the way the uh, NTSC format is a 4.3 format but with a pixel aspect of 0.9 now that, what that means to us is the image that we're actually seeing currently has actually been squashed um, if uh, we have square pixels we have a pixel aspect of one um, if they're stretched they have uh, above one um, and with things like 
PAL resolution that has a pixel aspect of 1.067, you'll find the pixels are slightly stretched. Um, and in the case of our um, uh, NTSC, they've been slightly squashed. So um, I can adjust this by going into my lens attributes. So I'm just going to go into my object browser and you'll see under lenses, if I double click in there, it will bring up that same attribute editor again, but this time I'm loaded onto the lenses tab.